then what, what do you face today? At that time, uh, the country was under economic sanction. There was no political freedom, which means uh, people could not exercise democratic, democratic rights. You know, people had uh, hardly any communication with the outside world. Internet service was uh, under strict scrutiny. So you can see the difference, how difference uh, between those days and now. A difference between the, within a span of 13 years since you have come back, isn't it? Yeah, about, uh, to be accurate, about 12, 13 years. So in 13 years you have witnessed a lot of changes here? Yes, I did. Uh, even in terms of development, um, we can see that the, the um, roads are wide, you know, electricity supply is almost regular. Um, and you have internet. In case, internet service. Well, it's, uh, you can see the whole world now, what is happening now in the U.S. or in Australia or in Canada. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's within, within a second you can find out what's happening there. Yeah. So it's a different world. Yeah. So the, the other question that I would like to ask you is about your perception of the religious uh, freedom and movement around here. Well, <coughs> I, I, I should say because I know it, I have experience. When this country was um, under military rule, religion was the only way for them to meet together, gather together, assemble together, and celebrate together. Otherwise, it was not possible to be in a group, in a large group. They were allowed to, to perform. They were allowed to assemble in, in, the, in the temples, either it, you know, in Hindu temples. Uh, that's the only source that they could gather, they could uh, communicate with them. Uh, they could they could celebrate whatever they want their, according to their own religion. I think the, this government has done, even the military government has done a very good job giving uh, it, you know giving full right to their exercise their religious freedom. When this uh, problem in Rakhine came, uh, some international forms, some groups, they tried to paint it as a religious problem. But I talked to one very influential Muslim leader, whether that was the case. And he denied, and he told me that we don't consider that it is a religious problem. It is a problem of that particular location, particular area, and it has nothing to do with, with the Muslim at large. Yeah, I think the people outside, um, they should know that uh, Rakhine you know, alone is not Myanmar. Rakhine is a very small part of Myanmar, and then uh, that problem um, has occurred there. It is quite unfortunate. You know, they should not think that uh, if there is a problem in Rakhine, Myanmar is in trouble, you know, uh, or, or they should not see Rakhine as a sort of Myanmar's problem. So going on to a different topic, your president came. Congratulations on that uh, very successful visit recently, because I know uh, you also signed two MOUs with this yes. government. Yes. So perhaps you can tell us about the, um, the highlights of that visit. Mm. Yeah, I must say that uh, her visit went extremely well. And I should like to thank the government um, and the people of Myanmar for giving all the support and assistance to, to make our visit success. As you said, uh, there were two MOUs were signed. One is on the cultural cooperation, and the other one is on tourism cooperation. Because these are two so important uh, for our two countries, because we share the same sort of, you know, similar tradition and culture, uh, and religions are not so, you know, we um, have a sort of similar social system, culture, even food habits um, are similar. Uh, so a lot in common. Not in common. And that's why I think two, those two MOUs were very, very important in, in, from my point of view. We had also signed three MOUs before. One on the trade and investment. It was signed during the visit of the state councillor during her visit to Kathmandu in November 2018. And uh, prior to that, two MOU were signed in Kathmandu again, one on the bilateral consultation mechanism and the other one on the, ex the exemption of visa mm -hmm. for government officials and diplomats. And so that, that made our life easier. 
But uh, before I came to Myanmar, uh, we, didn't, we didn't have any kind of MOU sign. So I, I must thank the government of Myanmar for making it uh, possible. Mm. And so uh, with the MOU signed, uh, what sort of progress do you think uh, the relationship between the two countries can make? It is. I must say it is a good beginning. Um, the trade is now increasing uh, between the two countries. Mostly um, the commodities from Myanmar to Nepal um, has increased significantly. That uh, There are other also many opportunities, uh, many potentials to do business between the two countries. And I must say that um, so far we, we, we didn't have much business in the past because the business people or businessmen of Myanmar didn't know the market of Nepal. Similarly, uh, Nepali businessmen, they didn't know at all what Myanmar looks like and what kind of uh, goods available. Uh, so they had, no, they had no idea about the market. But now it has increased mm -hmm. significantly. Yeah, so that means uh, there needs to be more visits between the two countries. Which is very essential. Yeah. And so perhaps I can go on and ask you about the, uh, the 2020 tourist year that you have been yeah. working on. Well, yeah, our government uh, has announced uh, 2020 as a Visit Nepal year. And then the, the purpose is to increase the um, flow of tourists coming to Nepal. And um, with the completion of uh, Gautam Buddha International Airport in Lumbini, mm -hmm. uh, we hope that the flow of uh, uh, pilgrims and tourists from Myanmar will increase significantly. Um, recently, Chinese President Xi Jinping was in Kathmandu. He also expressed the same way that perhaps the Buddhists in China might wish to come to Nepal, to Lumbini. So uh, there are good pro progress, I must say, uh, to bring more and more tourists uh, to Nepal in the next year. And this is, the, and I should say, it is, it is not the end of that, you know, it is just the beginning, beginning to invite more and more tourists. Because at the moment, the figure of tourists coming to Nepal is very small as compared to other neighboring countries. So what's the biggest attraction for tourists to your country? Well, uh, there are many attractions, in fact, but uh, the people in the world, they know about Mount Everest. So many, they come for mountaineering to climb Mount Everest and then feel that uh, they, have, they have been in the top of the world. <laughs> and then secondly, of course, uh, Lumbini, which is uh, the center for peace as well as uh, for Buddhists. It is, it is very important. Uh, uh, site for worshipping and, and the pay homage to Lord Buddha. And also we have uh, many cultural sites there, many cultural heritage, natural beauties. And also it's a good destination for adventurous tourism. So we have many things to offer, but still we have not been, we have not been able to, to convince people to come and visit Nepal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to invite um, as many as Myanmar people to visit Nepal next year. It is uh, a coincidence, I must say, that uh, next year, 2020, is also the 60th anniversary of our bilateral relations between Myanmar and Nepal. Because the though the diplomatic relation was established 60 years ago, but we had, our con we had opened our consulate office in 1948. So, um, but we celebrate 60th anniversary as a diplomatic relation. So, it, it's a coincidence. And uh, when our president met with uh, with His Excellency President Wu Mi, as well as the State Councilor, um, uh, the the leaders, they discussed that we should we should celebrate the 60th anniversary of bilateral relation um, successfully. At the same time, the two leaders assure that they will, they will uh, encourage uh, as many as Myanmar people to visit Nepal, to make visit Nepal a, a success. What I hear that perhaps there might also be a possibility of uh, 
of a high-level visit from Myanmar once the Gautam Buddha International Airport in Lumini is open. And um, the business community, they are also ready to take few charter flights to Lumini from here. And the travel agencies and tour operators, they would also like to see that uh, pilgrims uh, from Myanmar, they visit Lumini first and then to both where because that is the right course to, to follow, uh, you know, from the birth and then the place of enlightenment and then the place of Dhamma and then the, the Sarnath where Gautam Buddha, Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you this Nirvana. Yeah. So you make it all sound so attractive that I want to visit myself. You must. And uh, it's not really you. Perhaps you should also uh, bring your friends uh, and your relatives. And what I learned that uh, you have you have a childhood friend or your classmate in, in Kathmandu, uh, so that will give you an opportunity to meet your friend as well after many many years. That's true. <laughs> so on that note, uh, I would like to say thank you for giving us time. Thank you for inviting us to your embassy, and also not only the embassy but to your country. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. I know it's a good one, 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 I know it's